Hey folks, just doing a sound check. Let me know you're hearing me, all right? Awesome, we'll get started in just a minute. Welcome everyone. It is a uh, live Wednesday. We have to come up with a better thing to call this. Appreciate everybody showing up. We're getting a, a fair amount of folks already in the room. So we're going ahead and get started. Uh, by the way, everybody tell Jason happy birthday. It is his birthday today. Happy birthday, Jay. He, he's almost 30. What a joke, huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so a uh, lot to go through today. There's, um, we're continuing to see the tech rally take over the world. And, uh, you know, I've talked a lot about on the channel about this leadership change. It just doesn't want to happen. And 
it's concerning to me more than anything just that we're just seeing this monster maybe blow off top here and um, you know I just uh, yeah it's sort of like <laughs> I'm saying all the happy birthdays sort of like going to a restaurant and somebody doesn't want the, the birthday song so uh, sung for them so sorry Jay but happy birthday again yeah who's Jason my son uh, anyway, yeah, so he's, yeah, so, uh, anyway, yeah, so there's, there's just a lot going on, and I've talked a lot about this whole scenario of, of this leadership, and we'll, we'll go through a, a lot of details today. I've, I've got some notes here, and, uh, I want to also unpack you know, some of the objectives for the S&P here, if there is such a thing, if we can try to put some numbers on this stuff today. Just uh, reviewing some of my notes here that I made for today, but I, I just uh, uh, just see uh, uh, this craziness uh, continues. And it's interesting because uh, I think a lot of you will learn some things about watching a massive quant database unfold, and we've we, you know, uh, I've been talking about the short-term database, which a lot of times will give us some feel for how things are going to trade, but often it's just uh, uh, we're just seeing rotation in the short-term database, and the long-term or the intermediate database is just on fire right now. It's at 69%, really telling us a lot about what what's going on with the internals on the longer-term trend. So. Uh, I'll, I'll go through all these details today, and if there's um, obviously uh, um, a lot of things, uh, you know, I think the uh, last couple videos or so, and I've been talking, you know, I've seen a lot of comments on the, on the timeline here about gold. Gold was one of the easier calls to make. It's, uh, I guess you don't want to celebrate if you guys remember, celebrate with the S E L L, uh, the old comment from uh, uh, one of my old floor buddies back in uh, San Francisco in the olden days. They used to always say, "Don't if you're celebrating, you better be selling." So that that's something that uh, to remember. If you're feeling really good about a position, you probably should give some back. Uh, Anyway, um, yeah, so the, the things I'm going to go through here in this first hour or, or so is really focused a bit on the, on the individual, uh, you know, on the individual indexes, the S&P, the NASDAQ. We'll look at some of the, the leadership that's not changing, and, and my whole hypothesis has been that you're we need to see that change to get a healthy market and you know they're just a stampede into these tech stocks and i also want to talk about these splits on apple and the tesla splits that are coming and you know there seems to be some mis i think uh, perception of what all this really means and we've got a lot of new players in the markets and now, I see just a, a lot of lot of old terms flowing around the markets. People read books, and that's a good thing. But uh, the a lot of the traditional uh, things like if you hear uh, bugle top. Well, bugle top is probably the most bullish thing I've ever seen in my life, and it's perceived to be the opposite. And I I may have mentioned this before, but if you read Edwards and McGee, the old book from 1948. Do the opposite of everything it tells you it is. Uh, I started reading that book way back in the in 1979 and 80, and I've been looking at it, and everything I could see, it was just completely backwards. And so we're really we're really just seeing a uh, I guess a, a continuation of of uh, the re regurgitating old ideas coming into the markets that don't work and so anyway let's uh let's get focused here and and start to talk about these markets and get over and and look at the let's start digging into 
the S&P to start. We're up 28 handles right now, and we're con we're continuing to see it, it. It's interesting, even being up 0.82, we're seeing PPMs just in that stabilization mode. Now I'm going to bring those those of you that I, I see a lot of familiar names on the on the channel here, uh, and if you're new watching, I I, I want to bring off a, a talk about a concept here and I and I talk a fair amount about this off and on but this is I'm going to draw this stuff in but these momentum indicators which are I call PPM stand for price pressure momentum what they do is they actually show the what I call the angle of attack. And once you get to this initial move, the next phase is these indicators all go into this sideways range. And the divergences do show up on occasion that means something, but not a lot. And so this is classic where, and you folks have heard this, this before, but this is what I call the, the creepy crawler especially this last section going back after the June 9th high and looking at this, what we're seeing here is really just this channel and the market grid is just grinding through the market grid. Now we got above the RXT number today, the, that number 62, 3462. And I've been the last two videos, I've talked about a target range on a short term basis of the 30, 3455 to around 3464 so we're printing those numbers uh, we went through those numbers and and so we're seeing the potential for today for this thing to get a little overextended and we're it's a little early yet but we're we're seeing this move above the RXT number and I also discussed that the volatility or the daily range volatility uh, there's a couple measures of volatility. The volatility I use is looked at as the average range of the last three days. And then we run some Fibonacci projections to come up with the market grid. And it's not a high low, it's not exactly a high low calculation. It's done slightly different. But the point is it gives us some, some good trading points. And we will see often that this, it'll trade within the grid only about about 12% of the time will it get outside of the grid. And, and this is one of those one of those days. So out of maybe 10, 20 days, you might see two days that we get above above or below the grid as far as that goes. As far as and so we're we're seeing that today. We're this thing's starting to get into uh those of you who weren't around back in the day, but uh, Alan Greenspan coined a phrase called, uh, uh, you know, exuberance. We're getting this excessive exuberance in the markets, and it, it's really, uh, it appears and it feels like it's never going to end, which is always dangerous in itself. Going to what I said a little bit ago, if you're feeling really good about something, you probably should be uh, celebrating or selling some of the position. But the uh, this whole concept here that I'm presenting to you with these PPMs, this is a sustainable rally. This thing's not going to go down. I've mentioned this on the, on the videos of the last several days is that they're absolutely limited. The downside is limited and it's going to continue to be like this until we maybe see some sort of extreme excess or move or what I call an expansion volatility expansion along with a momentum starting to expand and we've not seen any any of these things this thing just is grinding and grinding i use that term i don't know probably two weeks ago the markets just grind higher that's exactly what's happening here and we're going to get into some calculations on where this thing is likely to go i think i have a, a matter of fact i do i'm going to Hopefully this will uh, this will br bring this up, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring something on the screen here. 
that I, I've showed you in a couple couple videos. And it's uh, this thing right here. Let me make this just a touch bigger. This this is some of the calculations. I did this back on 430. I, every day when I do the commentary or the videos, I, I have a, a sheet, something like this, that is trying to calculate where the prices are going. And you see here, uh, I actually was talking about a potential A and uh, a equals C at 35.29. You'll see also a target here of 35.14. So we're getting really close to these numbers now. That, like I said, this was done, you know, four months ago, and th these, um, the at the time the big pivot was 31.24. So we got above that, we're going to see uh, uh, the thing moving. So there were a lot of numbers I was looking at at the time, and the reason why. These these targets are still valid, and whether we're going to exceed them or not, we're going to try to. I'm going to put some math to this thing today and try to figure out, you know, what what's possible here. And in as far as the, uh, you know, we'll we'll go to the Nasdaq as well here in just a minute. But the, you know, the Nasdaq just in a complete, you know, it's crazy. I mean, look at this. We're up almost almost 2% on the futures right now. So we're trading almost 12,000. Remember when I called 11,000? Everybody was, uh, I remember seeing a lot of comments on the channel, oh, it's not going to make 11,000. Well, here we are at 12,000. And, you know, so uh, the next couple hours here, we get to spend time together into the close. So we'll, we'll have a lot to uh, watch this thing finish and how it finishes today. But just remember, our friend, Mr. Powell will be talking tomorrow, and there's going to be certainly, um, you know, just a, a side comment here, come on, back on screen, that Powell's going to be telling everybody exactly what they want to hear. These folks see an opportunity in, you know, pumping the markets, convincing everything's going to be okay. You know, you see, uh, once again, you see Madeira results talking about, you know, all these positive results. So that's what we're seeing in the markets here, the reflection that, you know, we're not all going to die. We're all we're going to live after all. And uh, I'll know it when I can watch a college football game. Right. Uh, but the but all of this stuff is you're going to hear this. The next two sessions today is kind of the expectation. Maybe we'll. It'll be, you know, buy the rumor, sell the fact. We'll see when Paul talks tomorrow what he has to say. But these guys are, I made this comment early on on the week that all of the central banks being together, whether it's virtually or, or, or whatever, they're putting a plan together. And the plan is massive monetary stimulus. And they're taking advantage to restructure all of the things that we know and love. And they're going. They they've already they've already got control. So it's going to be very difficult, at least from here, to be talking about any any major tops. But we're still going to go through the 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 math because even in these situations, and you know, you can see I'm an old guy. I've been through a lot of markets. I started in 1979, and so I've seen all the craziness where these things are running away. And it just feels like it's going to go forever. Well, it, it won't. And a lot of these markets are parabolic. I mentioned, and maybe maybe we can do it live. I mentioned on a, I think it was last week or at some point in time that I was going to look at, see if we can find some of these old commodity charts. I think I have have uh, some of these uh, commodity markets. I may not have access on the platform or not, but there there's some old markets where we've seen where we've seen these parabolic moves and then they ultimately will when they end it's sort of like you know like a, a prop airplane or maybe even a jet at some stage they go vertical they get to the point where they just finally don't have enough momentum to keep going and they just roll over and you know that's 
that's probably what's going to happen in, in at some stage. And, you know, we'll we'll see how far these folks can pump these markets. And you know, uh, we've never seen anything like this before. We've never seen multiple trillions of dollars pumped into markets. You know, nothing like this. And plus, I believe there's been a re, there's a, a process of reengineering society totally. Um, and you know the um, the the whole basis for um, I guess for all all of the re I, I guess the reorganization is just moving around the cities. If you look at what's went on in China, China moved everybody from the country into the cities. They've actually built. I saw a video a few weeks ago where they built cities waiting for people. It's the old theory: build it and they will come. Well, the same thing here, the, these folks, these folks, meaning the central banks and the the uh, we'll, we'll just call them the um, the smart people, right They 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 know what's best for us. They're going to engineer this thing. I've been talking about for months now, the p probability of seeing in of uh, universal income. There's a lot of folks that have been displaced in all the economies across the world, especially hospitality and the travel business and all that stuff. There's all there's a lot of folks being displaced here. And so I don't know how long it's going to take to have that come back. But we'll, we're, I'm going to go through and go through a, a, a much deeper thought process and uh, uh, on a lot of things that I talked about in last night's uh, video which is just this, uh, you know, the next question that we have to answer is how much capacity can we get back of the economies? And not just the U.S., but the world. And that's why the central bank situation is huge, but it's not going to, and I said this last night, it's not going to be just the central banks. It's going to be all of the governments putting stimulus together at some level. There's almost a matching program. If you do this, we'll do this. And in spite of the division in the Senate and the House and all this stuff that's going on politically, these folks will come together. Because it, 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 it seems odd, but they will come together and there will be compromise and there will they're going to do this. And I think they're waiting to see just what the central bankers came up with because it's like, you know, who can outdo each other? I think it's really just a matching program. And if that's the case, then, you know, the the top in the S&P could be 7,000. Okay, I said it. You guys are going to really troll me on this one. But the it this thing could be just at the beginning. And I'll, I'll go through the database because our database is saying that we're, we're only about 20% into the intermediate trend right now. So we're just, a, we're, we're not at, a, we're at a high, but we're not at a top. And there, there may be some consolidation, there will be at some, at some phase, but this is the event that they're setting up for us. And this is what you're seeing, the expectations growing on, on the screens here. So let's go back, I'm gonna go back full screen and I wanna really start talking about, let's start looking at some potential Number, we'll start with some Fibonacci things. I will I will attempt to do some some calculations here very quick, uh, real time, just so we can come up with some potential ideas of where this market will go. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to go over to a, a weekly and there's currently no weekly projections out here. So we're going to we're going to have to do the math manually. The pattern recognition tool that I built will find and these dots that you see on the screen are actually showing where the potential moves are to the upside. And some of these old calcs are still are still good and these old calcs were suggesting 
3,700 uh, 3, on the S&P. And this is a weekly graph. And as I just mentioned, I showed you that setup screen that I had up there that the potential for a um, for a 30, 35, 14, 35, 29, these numbers are, are going to get are, are going to be correlated. But there's something here that going back to my April 30th analysis that I have, sometimes it's it, sometimes doing analysis and walking it forward like I do every day on the channel. And now that we do these live streams that we have, then the um, what 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 happens is when you're doing analysis, and you probably all have experienced this, is that your first analysis was probably the right one. So I'm I'm going to stick with some of these numbers, and not only that, I'm going to I'm going to try to dispute what I said on 4:30 on April 30th, as far as this being an upward ABC. And some folks um, tend to think that you can't have a, um, like a, this would, if this is an upward ABC, that would suggest it's a corrective wave. And most folks don't think that a, a B wave can make a new high. And that's not at all how it works. You can make a new high. There's nothing wrong with that. It really comes down to the structure of the market. So I'm going to take the market grid off just so we can get a, a cleaner view of these of these patterns. And one of the things that you recognize, especially on the weekly chart, it appears there doesn't appear to be a structure, and we're going to talk Elliott Wave for a minute. This is, does not seem to be a structure that there's a five wave pattern unfolding, unless it's this monster pattern that all we've seen is one, two, and we're at the beginning of a wave three. And I'm not even going to go there because that, that calculation would, uh, you know, maybe maybe next week we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll just see how things go. But for now, my original premise of what was going on back in April 30th going with the first answer was possibly the right answer, is this. That this was an ABC. Here's the old highs. I'm going to draw a bunch of stuff on here. This is the old highs up here at the 33, was it 33.92, I think was the old number. And so now we've well above that. We're almost 100 points above that. And, but this structure here, uh, I'm going to go through a couple, a couple elements. The structure looks like it could be just an ABC. So uh, what I'm going to do, it'd be kind of cool if I had a camera that I could actually show you, show you doing this math, is that this is kind of an educational event as it turns out. But so what, I, what I'm doing here is drawing it I'm just drawing this ABC and we're going and so there's a basic theory that that a couple of things will typically happen in an upward ABC is that the A and the C wave are equal but also the the C wave can be a percentage of the length of A because it's corrective it may not go as far so it could be anyone anywhere from a 0.38 length to uh, 0.618, we could go 0.73, or it could be equal. So usually what I'll do is do the uh, 38, 0.618, and, and point, uh, yeah, uh, three, uh, 0.382 and a 0.618 calculation. And, um, and, then the, and then if A and C are equal. So let's figure this out real quick. So the low on the S&P was 2191. So we're going to do round numbers. The top of, there's, 
the top of the A, we're going to call it up here, which is going to be the ninth. That's going to be 32.33. And then the bottom was 29.65. So now what we have to figure out is what is the length of the A waves. Pretty simple, right? Um, 20, uh, 32, 33, minus 21, 91. That's 1,042. That means that a 0.382 is going to be 398. Bear with me, folks. This is be we'll get into deep stuff here in a second. Six hundred and forty-three points for point six one eight, and then equal is going to be ten forty-two. So let's figure these numbers out. All this will be calculated from this twenty-nine sixty-five low. So you you will remember these numbers if you've been if you're avid watcher of the channel that 0.382 target 3363 okay now we go to 0.618 target So 2965 plus 643, 3608, and then A and C would be equal. So hopefully you're all setting down at 4,007. Okay, so good. I got, I got that calculation. So I, I want to come back on screen here. Matter of fact, I, I, I want you to understand something. If this is a a corrective wave, which there's an argument that fundamentally, I, I, you see stories out there, double dip recession, all that stuff. But this is being an in, this is an engineered pattern that we're seeing here. And if these numbers come in, then we've already passed 3363. That number's done. So 3608. So I'm going to go with a couple calculations. Some of the stuff that we're seeing on the screen with Fibonacci projections off of the patterns what will happen is it, potentially we will see this uh, the pattern recognition tool that I have this calculation I just did will show up on the screen down the road here because it's just it needs it, it has it has to get I think uh, it needs two more bars on a weekly to actually calculate this pattern but so we sometimes have to get ahead of it and do it manually but the a move to 3608 doesn't seem that big a deal. And especially when you get to these kind of numbers, you're not talking a lot of percent move here. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, you're looking at one one percent move is, you know, uh, uh, 34 handles. So 10 percent would be would be a, a lot. So you're looking at maybe a, a four to six percent move to reach this 3608 number and you know that's going to uh, that's going to co course coincide with all of these some of these numbers and we could take 
a lot of time today. I could spend hours going through a lot of calculations, especially if we start to break down some of the individual components going through the apples and the Googles and find out, you know, where do those guys happen? And it goes back totally to what I've been talking about as far as seeing some type of leadership change. Now, I, I still think that the, what I call the back end of the S&P, so outside of that top 27%, that we have to see, for the most part, the S&P is a large and mid-cap index. So we need those mid-caps to actually rotate in. And the only way that's gonna happen is that the economy has to come further online and we have to start, continue to see this stuff unpack from the standpoint of economic activity and that's probably all related, and I don't argue at, at a point at, with anyone that certainly the confidence in a vaccine or something like that is going to go, okay, we can, we can actually get this thing running again. I mentioned in last night's video that I think we're running maybe 55, 60% of the capacity of the economy right now. So there's a couple new themes, and I, uh, those, you folks have just met me in the last few months. And there's a number, there's a couple new themes that I see starting to develop. I've talked a lot about the housing, the, the geographical move in the, in the country from that standpoint where we're seeing, you know, the urban move out to, to even to the rural areas. I saw a story this morning that Denver is a big target for folks exiting the Silicon Valley. And if, um, I, I started the original company that, that did WaveTech and the, everything we do. Matter of fact, our IT department is still in Denver. And, you know, we started in Denver. And it's, it's a great area. And it's also turned into a tech center over the last several years. So there's already been a movement. The point is, is that all of the, the whole country is going to get reorganized. I showed you lumber prices on on a video just a, a week or two ago, and you know the, this, you know it's not about uh, lumber prices, but the lumber prices reflect the demand and what's going on here. Um, uh, a building that my office is in, you know, is is owned by a real estate company, and I've been talking to them about what's going on, and in our particular area, it's very. It's a very hot market right now on a residential, especially in these rural com communities that are, are attracting a lot of people out of the cities that just want to get out for whatever reason. So the point is that there's demographic cha uh, demographic or ge ge uh, geographic changes in the being shifted around and urban sprawl, which was once believed it was going to contract and go back to the cities, is now because of the pandemic and everything that we've seen here is seeing a restructuring of thought in society and what people are wanting to do. And we know that everybody lives on, on a Zoom meeting. I mean, courtrooms, you name it. Every, there is no, nobody's getting together and doing these things. So this, this is a big theme. And I'm, I will be talking about this as we go forward in trying to identify some areas and rotation in the stock market that is going to to be guide us to where the profits are going to be. Obviously, tech stocks are working, but there has to be longer term, and there will be a, a rotation to that. So you know, uh, uh, you've got the uh, the uh, so-called elites and people. One of the easiest things for things to uh, for folks to do right now is you know tell you that there's a depression coming this is the worst thing ever you know it the, for some people it absolutely is what's the old story if if uh your neighbor's out of a job it's a recession if you're out of a job it's a depression and that's exactly what uh how it works from a from a psychological standpoint and from a society's view and individual's view of the world but this is we're seeing a lot of restructuring of just about everything that we knew and loved before before January. So uh, I know I'm kind of going down this rabbit hole pretty far, but I think it's important to understand that there is going to be a thematic turn 
in the markets. And um, hopefully uh, this weekend we'll be able to get some restructuring on the WaveTech tool and get some of these these strategies and their pre-built strategies for uh, homes and different. We have a bunch of stuff that we put together that will address some of these trends. And you know, even in uh, building materials and all this stuff. So you know, yesterday just final rant, and then we're just gonna I'm gonna move on. But I, I want you to understand that the potential for the S and P now. Just if, even if, let's say I'm right and this is just a corrective wave. I don't, I don't want to go what happens after that because it doesn't matter until we get closer to that. But the potential is 3,608 to 4,000. I mean, that's, that's a crazy number. So I get it. But that's what the math tells us. We've already exceeded the first number. Chances are we'll hit the middle number, you know, will be the minimum is 3608 so the target's going to be going back to the thing that i showed you a minute ago the the target's going to be you know somewhere between maybe uh 35 29 to the you know 3608 level that's that and that because of the the nature of where we are in this market right now that's you know that's almost a a, a given so those of you who knows, maybe somebody's watching that, that knew me. Uh, when I was on a trading floor, I was I found out that after I left the floor, uh, they uh, I had a nickname and they called me Doctor Gibbon because I like to use that. That these these are Gibbons, right? And this this market is not going to end right here. You know, I thought uh, as I discussed on the channel last week, because of the short term rotation in our database, it was selling off very hard. I thought there was a potential for a, maybe a, a four to eight percent correction well there was a reversal last thursday that just threw that that was done and i got criticized on the channel because i flipped my view do you know what they'd be saying about me right now if i didn't flip my view and now the market's at 34.76 and at 33.60 uh, i was still going well it's going to go down you know so no that's it, like i've told you folks i am I am a trader analyst, not a analyst, and I'm not Harry Dent and Peter Schiff and all these guys that just have an attitude and they say the same thing for 20 years and they sell their products. That's not what I do. You know, we're looking at uh, quantitative software. I've got my own software platform. We've got all of this stuff that we have built over the last 20 years. And, you know, this is this is important to understand as far as as the perspective that I'm bringing to you. And it doesn't mean, you know, there's there's a lot of math and you can see everything as you watch this channel. I hope a year from now we're doing this and you folks find all the light bulbs go off and you get it. And that that's exactly what, what we're looking at. So we're gonna start to move the, uh... yeah, so I, I'm just looking at the, at the timeline here for a minute, but yeah. Um... Yeah, you know, the the tech bubble episode coming soon. Sure it is. It, there is, you know, and re, I, re, I recall the 2000.com. And, you know, one of the things that uh, that I, I, I will talk about here, and I'm going to bring it up on screen since this this is important to understand. And the um, I'll bring up the wave tech and I want to go to the weekly I want to go to the weekly database and just unpack this a little bit because this this particular sequence is important to understand what we have right now is 60, we'll call it 69% of all the symbols, 11,393 symbols are actually long right now. And what that means is there's been almost, a, all of these are recognized trending patterns or the probability for these symbols are for them to appreciate. That's a big piece of the database. And over here on the right, let me draw this in so make sure we all have our eyeballs at the right place. So 
go over here, optimize weekly. The average holding for these symbols is 205 days. And the average current duration here is 39 or the next line down, per, the percent fulfilled is is 19 percent. So only 20 percent of these trends have been fulfilled at this point. So that means there's potentially 80 percent ahead. Now, I've said this before, we normally don't get to 100 percent fulfilled. But on the, it was interesting as we look over on this column over here. Uh, as we look over on, on this, the, this optimized daily, this percent fulfilled actually got to 90%. It was one of the highest percentile captures that I've seen in recent history. Even going back to 2008 and 9 when we saw everything long, uh, everything in cash and then going to see everything long around 92, 94% of the symbols got long during that time. But we never got to that percent fulfilled at the level that we've seen this time. And I've talked about this as well before, is that this is because of the, uh, the nature of this V bottom and it's being engineered. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter. It is what it is. Is you, We're seeing all this trillion, trillions of dollars of, of fiat cash being poured into markets, and it's there's the only place to go right now is the stock market. And that's that's where all the cash flow is. So we're, oh, the other thing I want to, I'm going to clear these numbers out just so you can see something so I clean it up. But this, let's stay focused on this optimized weekly column here. The current average profits is 8.5% on this uh but now we're only uh, we're 28 uh, percent looking at. So the average profit, I'm sorry, average profit is 29 percent. So the average return on these, if we go back over here, 11,393 symbols is 29 percent return. So far, the average profit's only 8 percent. So we've got another 20 percent on average to go and the all of these numbers don't actually always hit the metrics but they usually go about 80 percent of that so we're easily looking at 20 22 percent so there's a lot ahead of this market so this if i extrapolate out what i'm telling you here is that there is potential for uh, another 10 12 percent move which actually maps out pretty close to this 3,600 plus number. Actually, it goes above that number. And this this is what's in us. One other thing that, as I talked about, is the average hold is 205 days. Right now, the average is 40. So there's 100. These are trading market days. So the average is that we've got another 160 market days, a better part of six months. So you can you can take this out as as far as as you want and start to understand what's going on in these markets. And yeah, so and and listen, I, I just saw something on a timeline. And absolutely right. A lot of this market movement, if you took all took away all the share buybacks, we wouldn't be where we are today. And that continues to be a major feature. But once again, it's our job to know that that's what's going on. It doesn't matter what's driving the prices up. So you've got it that they are going up. And that's that that's the key element here. And there's still enough uh, enough stock out there you can buy it. Okay. Uh, I think I spent enough time on that. I, I, I really, that was one of the the primary features that I wanted to talk about today is unpacking the potential for a move. Now there's some, I'm gonna to go to one last chart and complete this. You're gonna see something pretty interesting here. 
I just talked about 3608. I'm going to bring this over on the screen here. This is the monthly graph, and we got some targets on, on the upside. 2572. I'm sorry, hang on. Let me get the right number here. High target, uh, 3238. We went through that. The next number, 3638, 3885 off of the monthly. Exactly. Once again, all of these numbers are starting to, to line up, and this is the cluster of numbers. So our goal will be two things, in my opinion, as we go forward in the, uh, uh, the channel following the markets, is determining what the right theme is. Is there going to be a rotation? Is there going to be leadership changes? Is the mid-cap and small-cap stocks going to come into play? All of those things are important to understand for sure. The other thing I just point out before I leave this chart, the PPMs are all accelerating. We have PPM one on a monthly basis is 1.44, 1.16 over here on PPM two and 0.98. These are just insane trend numbers. So, all right, so I think you've, you've got the point. We didn't really talk about NASDAQ. Let's just bring it up just uh, briefly here. I'm going to go to the monthly. This, this is actually a, a really interesting chart to bring up as we're, we're seeing this vertical move. I, you know, the NASDAQ, I, we know this, have been leading the way. But I want you to see on, the, on this grid here, bring up the data window back in and I, I think I did this on a video a few days ago back on here's that April 30th date these are things I was seeing back in in at the end of April early May if you notice here these dots up at the top th these dots right here these are the purple one is this 10,113. We got 11,600 on target two. And then this very top target, it's hard to see, it's kind of buried in there, is this 12,538. Well, we're trading, you know, 11,659 as we speak. So we're, we are trading target two okay and this target was generated these numbers were generated off of this pattern back on 430 that's the date right there and so uh we are meeting those targets do we get to the extreme target it's very likely that we that we will and that's 12,538 can it go higher than that sure no problem there's no problem with that but the, I just want you to see that these calculations, just like we were just, there are no, uh, there are current calculations on the monthly, on this secular graph, right? So looking at the, the larger trends, this, this is probably what the S&P is going to look like. It's going to come in to those ranges that I mentioned. And that's why I wanted to go through a lot of detail. And I never get a chance to do this stuff on the 12-minute uh, video. And this is this is an opportunity to really dig in to what the what the probabilities where where the markets can go. All right, so got that done. Uh, Nasdaq. I guess we could go one last level before I, I leave the indexes, and then we can we can go on to the metals. I know people are chambering on the sign. Um, Yeah, and um, let's see here. Yeah, so no current can, uh, targets for on the weekly right now. And if we go over to the daily, there are some targets here. And here we are, 11,671. Guess what? We 
hit a high today, 11,662. So target one, which is these dots right here, uh, is being reached 12,018, 12,233, starts to map out to these extreme numbers that came out of the 430 calculation or uh, going, in, going into this 12,000 plus range. So, um, yeah, so we got, we got that done. All right, let's, um, I'm going to, I'm just going to touch on this for a minute. I, I want to bring up the, uh, the 10 year notes real quick. And I think what we'll do is very briefly, I'm not going to go into the amount of detail I went on the indexes, but the. Very briefly, I want to go in through the 10-year, and then we do the dollar, and then we set, and then we move over to uh, gold and silver, and start to kind of go that route for right now. And then once I think we get through there, I th I'm going to I touched on I covered crude oil in last night's video. I don't think there's much to be said there. You should go back and watch that video if you didn't see it. It was uh, next to last stock that I covered. But this uh, tenure is continuing to to move higher. I still believe, I know it doesn't sound like a big number, but I, I still believe we're going to keep moving toward around somewhere between 0.9 and 1%. And this is being driven by the Fed's action. They want the yield curve to steepen. We're going to take a quick look at the yield curve. But this is the pattern. This is the short-term daily. When we click over and we look at the weekly graph, you'll see that we're heading 1.103, uh, uh, so a little bit over 1% is a potential target. You're seeing the PPMs on a weekly just screaming, okay? Rates are not going down from here. They're not going down. I have no idea what these central bankers are going to come up with their Friday statement, what's going on. But lower rates is not what, what we need, especially since they put all this capital in. They, they can afford, they want this yield curve to expand. So let's take a look at the yield curve. Uh, this is the 1030 yield uh, spread. And it's it was going down quite a bit. We've stabilized. I believe this will there'll be another leg up as far as the the steepening of this curve. We're going to at least get back to where it was before up over to this level here where I have my cursor. But this is going this is going to continue to to happen and unfold. So let's put up the uh, the dollar in, index. The dollar index has been uh, a little trickier uh, from that standpoint. We still have a lot of downward pressure. This is a weekly graph. Uh, we're starting to see the PPMs maybe form a bottom. I think we've hit a price low. The trends are still negative from that viewpoint. I don't see uh, any, and I've talked about this, I don't see much of a rally actually above around 94 maybe 94 and a half, maybe we could get the 90, 90, 94.8, but it's going to, it's going to remain stable here. Uh, if we look at the short term chart, you can see we've been setting up this low here for a little while and 90, 94.44 is a 40 period moving average. The PPMs on a daily are, are really setting up a nice bottom. So this, this is going to continue to form here and, you know, probably the one of the crowded trades that are out there yet most likely one of the, one of the crowded trades out there is short the dollar i mean you know try to find someone that not talking about the dollar collapsing and all that and debasement and all those guys and you can go everybody from you know the the real vision guys to you name it the uh, uh dalio all all the so-called what they uh, talk about smart people these folks are all calling for this type of move and they're, they're probably gonna you know it's almost they have to be wrong 
to to make this uh, make this valid. But the the point is, this thing is bottoming. It's starting to set these this up. Not talking about some major bull market in the Dow, so don't put me out as that. But what I am telling you is that it is bottoming. We're going to see a stabilization of the dollar. And somebody I saw on the on the chat line early on when I started to show that somebody was talking about the, the dollar and and gold. And we'll try to tie this thing all together so because I think uh, the potential for the dollar going up and gold at the same time are highly likely. And, you know, I I believe that we're going to find out a lot about the dollar as we come into Friday's statement, whatever these folks, uh, all the central bankers come up with, what type of statement they have. Listen, you can talk all day long about the dollar not continuing to be, you know, the uh, the primary currency on the planet. You know, uh, it's going to stay like that for a while. A lot of folks would like to see that change. It's not going to happen. And if it does happen, it's going to be over a longer period or there has to be some major disaster that triggers it that would cause folks to run away from the dollar. But where are you really going to go? You want to go to the yuan? You want to go to the renminbi? No, you don't. You, you, you want the world currency uh, to be reserve currency to be, you know, the Chinese? I don't think so. And there's no other currency big enough to carry the load as far as total float, all those things. And especially since they basically doubled the, the float on the dollar, they've doubled the amount of dollars in the market. And I'm expecting to see another big tranche, maybe another two or three trillion dollars of dollars out there. And I, I know a lot of you have watched it. If you watch that, that video, and I actually bought the book, and I'm, uh, it's taken me two weeks to try to find the time to be able to read this chapter, but it's called The Princess of the Yen. There's a good video out there. I think his name is Werner. It's a professor Werner. He's got a long history in uh, in South Asia and in, in Japan and working over there. And it's a, it's a brilliant view of uh, looking in the rear view mirror of what's happened and trying to ext extrapolate that out and what's likely to con uh, happen. So what we're seeing here is that the the whole the Fed doesn't want to see the dollar not be the reserve currency. They're they're actually making more and more dollars. And if there's anything going on on this planet right now, there's probably a shortage of dollars. And that so they they need more and more dollars to facilitate all these things. And I'm super anxious to see what these guys are, are willing to tell us. Like I said in last night's video. I don't think they're going to give us a lot of details. I think they're going to give us some basis of what they're doing. And then I think over the next several months, they're just going to keep flipping cards. Every time they need one, they're going to go, oh, hey, by the way, here's this card. And here's another another event that we're going to, to have happen. And that's that's the way this is going to work. So the dollar, even with all the new dollars in there, are there's such a demand for, for dollars right now that uh, just to finance what's going on. And like I said, there's no other currency that A, people are gonna wanna, wanna do. And maybe maybe it's because I'm, I'm American. I know we have an international crowd on this, on this channel, but I'm just telling you, there's no other currency that's gonna be able to float this thing. I had a d debate with a, a good friend of mine in Switzerland probably a month and a half ago and he's telling me how the U.S. dollar is done and everything. And the Swiss are going to be uh, take over the world in currency. And they, a lot of currency flow does go through the Swiss banks. Don't get me wrong. But I just don't see that happening today, not tomorrow, and maybe not for maybe another five, maybe ten years. And I'm not sure what that happens unless these folks are coming up with some kind of universal, you know, world currency, which... Uh, there's other implications beyond that. But for the moment, that's not going to happen. The dollar will stay there. I think I made my point. So um, let's go ahead and let's dig into the metals and start to take a look at exactly what's going on there. Uh, gold has had a really good day. I talked to you folks last week. I told you 1919 was going to be a, a a really big number. We actually printed down to 1908 
and then got a reversal pattern today. And 1904 was an extreme. And I've been telling you for at least six days that anything under 1920 is is a screen. It's a bargain. And so we 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 clicked 1908 overnight, and now we got a reversal. We're trading up around the 10 period moving average, and the uh, 10 period moving average right now is 1961. I talked about this last night where we'll go to the, uh, I'm gonna put the grid back up here in a minute, but there's, there's so much going on on this particular chart here from, this is just a daily from a PPM, from a Fibonacci price objective. Um, yeah, and I'll try to address that. I see somebody uh, talking about the, the financials and transport not participating now. Well, I'll try to, if I don't touch on that, go back, because there are some things that uh, I can say about that. But this chart here is uh, absolutely amazing. So we've got a really good reversal. We printed below the 40-day moving average. We got the reversal. We've had a high of 58 today, 1958, 40. The 10 pair moving average, 1961. If we get above 61 today, then we're going to have some really interesting targets. And I mentioned this last night or, or two, two nights ago in the video on gold is that the potential for these upward numbers here to be hit. So let me just draw in this pattern. This is like a classic correction. The next phase should be this move out of here. Now, if you went back, I was looking on the channel. I'm not sure these are live, but I went back, I think, a, well over a year ago. And when when gold was was way down in these this range here, I was a screaming bull on gold. I saw this rally coming, long-term rally. I thought we'd see... You know, 1800, 1900. We've done that. Now we're, now we're the next levels are this 20, 21 to 23, where you can see this target zone. And there, over here, when you see the high targets, these are the Fibonacci targets that are coming out over here, on this on this block right here. You'll you'll see these these targets, and those are the next stop. They're not going to happen overnight, but this was, and we'll, we'll see as time goes on, but I believe this move down to this 19, toward the 1900 level was the screaming buy. And I'm going to show you something else that got hit. But this, these patterns that are being targeted are very substantial. So I'm going to take these lines off for a second. And I want you to see, this was a previous projection right here. Matter of fact, let me just take this off just so I can get to this. This projection was on seven uh, on the twentieth of um, July, and the range projection was high target nineteen eighty six twenty fifty twenty eighty nine. We hit twenty eighty one high, so we went right right to that eighty nine high target three projection. Now we've generated a new projection, which is the 2144 to the 2300. So there's a lot here. It's not going to happen overnight. This one, this was really fast, but we're, we're looking at the potential. Once we get above this high here, which is the 20, I, I mentioned this number, it's 2013, uh, or 2015 is the magic number for the pivot, that's our big pivot number. A move above ab above this would be would be, and a close above. Let's back up. A close above 2015 would be the signal that these numbers that we're talking about here, 21 to 23, are going to happen. Now, what's happening in the world for gold to go to 2300? And you know, and why would uh, see, I don't think we're going to see a, necessarily a dollar rally, but a dollar bottom. So on a relative basis, I think 
folks are going to be running in to gold. And I've said this, this goes back probably a year and a half. Uh, I think some of these old videos are out here going back to like July of 19 or something like that. But this is going to be the hedge bet on all the craziness that we're seeing. And going back to what I've been talking about on, on this channel today, as far as the this parabolic move in the stocks and the fact that it could just be a simple ABC. I'm not going to even touch on what I think is likely after that. Uh, there's a much bigger multi-year pattern setting up. But this is this is going to be the hedge bet. And folks are going to continue to run in there, whether it's ex, um, speculation that there's going to be gold back currencies. Who knows what? We could find out a lot on Friday. We could find out what these uh, bankers' plans are. And let's face it, they are going to, they, the central banks, are going to dominate. They're, they're going to dominate what's going on in our lives. They're, they're running the show right now. That's, that's the way it works. So this is one of the places to make a hedge bet and this will most likely be the scenario. And so if we don't get the close over 60 today on gold, then that's not a big deal. I, I wouldn't want to see us sell off and close back under, you know, you know, 1920 again. That I wouldn't like that close, but it doesn't look like that's going to be what's happening. We're, we're about an hour and 20 minutes away from and not even an hour, we're, we're going to see gold close up here for the day session here fairly shortly. But, you know, this thing's not going to retrace. It's going to finish up at these higher levels. This reversal is going to be valid. And uh, the next phase will be, and I set this up pretty good last night, is that the very minimum short-term target is for 1979. Okay, enough. Let's go on to, let's take a look at, Let's go to silver. Very similar setup in silver as far as everything goes. What we're what we're going to see here is a very almost an identical clone type situation. But we got this rally up. Now we're getting this this corrective phase and this one is a even more bullish pattern because what we're seeing here is where this second low I just drew in with the longer arrow that is a, a higher bottom and you can see here look at the projections for silver 36 41 44 and I talked about this a number of weeks ago when we got this reversal pattern that we were going to go into a multi-week consolidation. And when that was over, we'd see higher prices. That's exactly what's going on. From uh, And this setting up, we just went through a lot of detail in the gold. But this is the targets for silver. And this is a daily graph. So let's go ahead and, and go to the weekly Now weekly has the we we had projections on the weekly and there's a big flag. This is a this actually I'm going to put the market grid back on here just for a second. But this is the flag that I said was set up. We'd get in after we printed this high way up here at at 30, 30 bucks an ounce. We'd get a consolidation and we're seeing this and we're all the PPMs are just huge uptrends 4.27 that's four point four and a quarter percent per week movement in this 10 period moving average that it represents about a dollar a week on this moving average so it's at 20 is at 23 it'll be 24 in three weeks it's going to be right underneath this action and that was the driver that I was talking about was the rate of change on the 10 period moving average or the angle of attack on the 10 period moving average in gold. I'm backing up here was where 
we printed today. We, 1904 was that number. We printed 1908, got a reversal. It just screamed, bounced off of that. And now the same same thing will happen here on silver in the next two weeks. And it made, and I, I don't think as in gold, now that we're about to make new highs here, but we are seeing this pattern set up. You're seeing this, this uh, wedge pattern set up and this consolidation. So let me put the grid back on so you can see what that looks like. So the, the grid has just had this massive volatility expansion. And so we look here, we're almost trading. So you can see on the left over here, we're looking at right now 2768 R1 $28. So we could continue toward 28. Next level 2928, but we're going to continue toward that number. And if I look at what was the low 26, we didn't we didn't even print an S1 for a weekly. We didn't come close to it, but we're likely to print an R1, which is the 28 handle. That that should be easy. We could even see a 2930. But this range that we're seeing here is going to be dominant. And this is what I was talking about going back. Three, three weeks ago, and we spiked over the RXT number. We actually managed to close right at the extreme on that week. But I said, this is where we'll set up this sideways consolidation. That's exactly what's happening. And there's still potentially another maybe three or four weeks before we get really set to go to those monthly numbers I just showed you a minute ago. All right. I guess what we could do, somebody's asking, uh, we can put SLV in here. It's probably one of the most popular silver ETFs. You'll see the same range here on a weekly is set up. We did manage on SLV to print down on the week. The S124, 20, So at S1, 1365 low, S1, 1362. So we basically was a dead hit on S1. Now we're working 93. We're working toward R2 on the SLV. But this is probably the best ETF to look at. Yeah, I doubt if you're going to get a reversal on S&P on a couple ticks here. Um, Nobody's going to be selling ahead of Mr. Powell talking. I don't. I don't think we're seeing a, a little bit of um, of a sell off here. Here's here's the little sell off. You went from uh, seventy eight to sixty eight, so you are getting some selling here. And uh, yeah, I don't know about a reversal. We're, We'll, we'll watch that closely. Thanks for the heads up while I was walking on, on some of these other markets. Yeah, and everybody knows that the top five companies make up a quarter, 25% uh, uh, of the market. That's that's a known fact. But anyway, yeah, so we're, we're seeing some selling come off here on the S&P right now. So let's go ahead and I'm going to open up the... Um, Um, let's see here. Yeah, so uh, SLB is trading twenty five thirty eight right now, up two and a half percent. So pretty good move. Let's let's open this thing up and. I'm going to just start hitting on stocks. I already know you folks. We're going to do Apple and Tesla to start off. But let's start hitting on some of the individual stocks here for the next hour or so. We'll start just, you got, you folks will run the show, okay? Yeah, so we'll, we'll hit Amazon here. I see a comment about Amazon and... 
yeah so yeah guys throw some stocks out at me so I'll, I'll i'll take i'll make some notes so i don't have to look at the timeline and i can just start running through these so we'll hit um yeah you got to give me symbols not names of companies i'm not i'm not jimmy kramer thank god All right, you guys are overloading me already. Okay. Yeah, I got Intel. All yeah, okay. Yeah, good, thanks. a lot of symbols I'm gonna I'm gonna um, all right Wow yeah if I open up a can of worms there all right I got quite a few so let me run through some of these um, yeah I like some of these symbols that you're bringing up though yeah be nice to just cover all these, wouldn't it? Yeah, Kramer probably would be bearish. Okay, all right. So let's let's start digging through some of these and just see what we come up with. And I'm starting with Disney, which is one of the first ones that came up. And we'll take a look. Disney's got targets of 156. I guess maybe they're going to get the parks open again. That's a big element. If you this is weekly, so I'm going to. Touch on weekly analysis, not the short term. I think that way I can get through a lot of symbols. But uh, targets 156 to 186. Support right now at, let me bring up uh, the grid from this standpoint, but support right now at well below the market, 121, 124, 121 support. It's going to have to get above this um, 133 area to, to break out, but it's gonna, it looks like everything's good here. You got all positive uh, PPM1, substantially positive. So this stock is uh, good to go. Um, here's uh, First Majestic Silver. It, it's interesting that these miners, and, and going to this over here, if you notice the High target was 1506. We actually printed uh, 1450 high, so we got just to that first target. Now we're seeing the consolidation, but right here the 10 period moving average 1145. We printed 1091, so you want to buy against that 1145 area, but you're going to have to be patient. But all the PPMs are are ready to roll, and but. Going to what I just said on silver, it's going to be correlated to a point, is that these companies aren't going to move. There's uh, several more weeks of consolidation before we'll start to see this thing really move move a lot higher. Uh, here, here's a, a, a company that's just struggling to get out of the way. Uh, Boeing, you know, uh, maybe Boeing's just a, you know, it gets packaged into the airlines, but, you know, there's so many airplanes parked right now. Um, do, does anyone need to buy more airplanes? I don't know. I don't think so. Even if you come up with the coolest airplane on the planet, I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of sales. So Boeing may have some issues, uh, but PPMs are still positive uh, uh, formation on the PPM2, but you got a very mixed picture here. So this thing has got more consolidation to go. It's not broken down and, and it hasn't broken out. And like I said, I'm going to stick with the weekly analysis on this. Um, TDD, uh, the trade desk, this thing has uh, starting to see signs of, uh, I guess, of a consolidation. But the key number here is this 10 period moving average at uh, 452. And you're looking at um, 1.95, so it's 10% uh, 
probability of dropping below that number. What was the low so far this week? 59. Yeah, so bargains are below this week's low if you get there. But next week, this thing is going to be, this thing's going up at $10. So this probably was the, this low this week. You'll continue to press up into this this trend and acceleration is going here. So this this one's going definitely going higher. There's no projections. I've got the Fibonacci's up there. Nothing I can tell you about targets on this thing from a technical viewpoint at all at the moment. So Freeport Macron, you know, these miners should continue to do good. And um, you know, these guys are, are, are giant players for sure. They got a major operations here in Arizona, not too far from where I'm at actually. But you got a big copper mine, but the uh, Targets, no no current targets. We're above the 200-week moving average. PPMs are solidly in trend mode. So this one is going to continue and higher. I suspect if my analysis ends up to play out on silver and gold, and we didn't really touch on copper, but all of these metals are going to continue. And it goes to what I said in the early comments today, is that we need to have what we need to figure out is what capacity will the economy get back? If I'm right, we're 55, 60. If we do another 20%, there's a lot of money yet to be made. Yeah, I see somebody making a comment on the um, the WaveTech tool, and I think um, um, oops, sorry about that. On the on the WaveTech tool, there is a way to find some of that diversification and. I'm going to be going through that stuff on next Tuesday's meeting. So make sure you come to that Wave Tech training. I'm definitely going to cover that. Moving on here, let's go to Intel. Just in case you folks don't know what the Wave Tech tool is, this is where to find out about it. You can go to kendallreport.com slash wavetech and take a look at that. Matter of fact, it's three bucks a day. You can do a, a few day trial for not very much money and then it rolls over. It's 97 bucks a month. So you can check that out. But the uh, as we look at Intel, uh, every every week this, this comes up and we're just hovering along this 200 day moving average. So Intel is probably made has is in the process of bottoming but there's still a lot of downward pressure substantial resistance around 52 53 but i don't think it's going to leg down any further than what it's already done that 200 week moving average should be the support line 47 60 is that line so we're we're pretty close i just don't know that there's going to be any any reason to own that maybe in about three to five weeks we could see something set up there as far as that goes um, not a lot there insg we do have some fib, fib targets up at around 20 to 24 ppms are starting to fail though i'd be a little cautious with this could see the lower end of the range start to 
print out where we can see 1016 down to maybe 906. There's a little risk in this in this stock at the moment. On on, and there also was right at the at this peak high was a cycle indicated. There was a cycle high that came in. This thing's got a lot of work to do. It looks like downside is probably limited down here to the uh, 920 area. So uh, in the grid for this week, and it'll be similar next week unless we blow this range out big, is probably around that 920 uh, to 906 is going to be downside on this. Upside is very limited. And lucky to get above. Uh, 1178 in this pattern here. Last week's high was uh, 1236. Yeah, 1178 is going to be about it. So kind of stuck in a range there. Uh, DAL. DAL, DAL start, has pressed up toward the higher end of the target range. We printed 3028. 3009 is the RXT for the week. So Delta's looking good, and it's like just tying together this Boeing situation. Boeing's just not a good airplane play, I don't think. It just, it, yeah, it, it, uh, not a good airline play. I don't think it should be in the same category just because I'm not sure anybody, like I said, are going to need to buy new planes. But this is looking good. We got PPM uh, at a 0.15, so we're, we're but the positive is uh, formation is is really good. But the PPM 2.136, and there's going to be a ceiling on this stock of around 35 to 37. So it's going to be limited. And I've, I'm going to flip over the daily because that's going to put us up to that 200-day moving average. And that's that's basically the top end of this market. So there's there's a little bit more on the upside, but, there's, but we're definitely seeing this thing starting to accelerate a little bit. Royal Bank of Canada, uh, back above its 200 week moving average. PPMs all very robust. So, you know, maybe, you know, this, this goes with the whole central bank scenario, you know, uh, the banks. And if you folks wouldn't mind, let me just get, um, let me get so I can see the um, yeah good I want I was hoping somebody put that out um, yeah the ETF that probably look at is the Jets while I'm on this has similar situation to the Delta situation where you're going to have some limitations around 21 bucks, which is a decent move. That's 20% plus, right? So that's nothing wrong with that. But you're definitely going to have some resistance. PPM2 is very positive, but PPM1 is, we're, we're kind of in that limbo stage. There's still some consolidation to go probably for another week or two. But ultimately, there's a cap 20, 20 and a half, 21 on this ETF for now. But ultimately, I think a lot of these things, and this goes to the one of the themes I talked about today, which is going to be the how much capacity can we get the economy back going again? That's going to be the key theme to watch out for. So I'm going to flash over just for a second. I want to keep an eye on... Um, on the S&P here. So it looks like maybe we're starting to set up maybe a minor bottom. There might be some more downside. So we definitely saw, and we did get, this is a, a good healthy sign because we get well above that XT number. So we're still seeing some selling come in to the S&P here, uh, 2050. Maybe we do get a reversal. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. I, I don't expect that. Um, we should start to see some stability down here and probably I'll, I'll just keep an eye on this and we start to get some numbers but we definitely printed 15 handles off the top this thing is definitely getting frothy we're getting into not a lot of oxygen up here okay um
American Express hovering around its 200 week moving average, mixed scenario as far as PPMs go. Um, PPM two and three are positive, but got to get above 105 to make this thing actually happen. But the good news is there are some Fibonacci projections up here at 129, 144. So I think everything, you know, and I when I go through these stocks, what I'm seeing here, it which is uh, which which is important to talk about is. The, these stocks that we're looking at, the, the banks, some of the airlines, this is all that capacity issue. How far can the economy continue to expand and bring that capacity back in? And that goes to the coverage I did last night on crude oil is moving crude oil toward 48 to 52 range is going to also be an indicator of demand and capacity of the economy. There's there's a lot to go. If uh, and it's a guesstimate that I put out there 55 60%, it may not even be that number. And it and that's why just to kind of segue just for a second, this is why I've been talking about on my opening comments that as we go through September, which we're just a few days away from starting, September and October we're going to start to see different metrics come out of the economy and there's going to be hot and cold spots and those spots are going to tell us about the capacity and, and all those type of things as far as the economy coming back online. So those are those are things I've got my eyeball on that I, I'll be talking about as we go forward is that you're constantly seeing this evolution of the economy coming back alive. There's certain elements that have come back online, they're solid, they're gonna stay there. The other stuff is between transportation, ultimately hospitality has to come in. I'm not sure what will happen to the um, the cruise lines. I don't, I don't even, I don't, I'm not really very interested in following those. There might be a, a great opportunity there, but I think that's gonna be probably the laggard, if anything, people wanting to get con confined in on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Not sure. I watch too many, uh, uh, too much Poseidon Adventure. I hate those boats. But anyway, the uh, all of this stuff is about the capacity of the economy coming back. It's a, it's that's what we're going to see uh, uh, that we have to watch because if we watch those elements, that's going to tell us where to rotate with our investments, and that's that's the key element. I've said this for you know, more years and maybe some of you have been around for over 30 years is my job, our job as investors is to find out where the cash flow is going. So when we when we see uh, some of these markets printing up like what we've seen here on these tech stocks, when money does come out of tech stocks, where does it go? And this is why, you know, I've talked a lot about these these spread charts and stuff like, uh, like that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, four more individual stocks, and then I am. Um, then I'm going to bring up these uh, spread charts just to talk about what's going on with the rotation of the indexes, and I think that that'd be a good segue just to to get out of out of that range. Yeah, so anyway, um, I guess somebody I saw a comment was uh, Versailles was such a good movie. I, I think about Jaws when a long time ago, and I grew up in the Chicago area, so I was even afraid to go into Lake Michigan after that in a freshwater lake. It's pretty funny. It's amazing how uh, easily psychologically we're affected, and that's what everything we see going on in society today is about. But uh, American Express, you know this this is uh this is part of that play and you know i'm going like i said i'm going to be looking at these things really closely and trying to determine where that rotation is going to go is it going to be the financials you know what what's going to happen there and i think these guys these central bankers are going to show their hand you know they're going to at least 
show us enough of the hand so they know we know what the next play is. So we'll see on Friday. All right. Here we are, I'm taking a look at Costco, PPMs. Obviously, everybody's staying at home, buying bulk food and what have you. Um, we're, we're probably going to go into a bit of, of a trading range here and stay within the grid. Right now, it looks like 30, uh, 331 to 57 is the range. That'll be similar range as we come into next week. So not a lot there other than we got positive trends across the board too. But most most of this most of this has been played out, it looks like. Uh, and it hasn't been as big as play in, in some of the other areas that, that we see here. Yeah, lumber liquidators. Um, interesting. Yeah, I think I'm going to segue from this uh, to possibly into we're going to take a quick look at the lumber chart on the futures. But yeah, so this uh, this thing is starting to get a little frothy up here. We got a minor reversal flowing right now. Uh, it's been a nice play above the 200 week moving average and uh, PPM won 7.74, 8.3. So this was this was the lumber play for sure. And I'm trying to remember if you, somebody out there knows, I think there is even an ETN or something a, a, or an ETF that's a lumber play, like a commodity play. If you guys know that, if you could throw that out on the timeline, on the uh, chat line, that'd be awesome. But let's uh, but let's take a, a similar look over here at the at the lumber graph, and it's up four percent today. This thing, this is a total parabolic curve, and um, it's interesting. I think it was a video in maybe December or January I talked about and. I, I thought I thought there was going to be a big move in lumber and and that there was going to be a big building boom coming on. And this was back here during this phase. Of course, we got the pandemic scare and then it, it went up. But my original projection was for that trend to continue up this way. So we're we're basically moving toward that. But everything's accelerating. This goes to the other theme that I that I've been talking about and so I, I think um, I, I think I'm uh, doing this doing this live stream today has actually uh, this has been me doing live analysis and coming up with some concepts I, I actually love these sessions it gives me time that I normally don't have just to dig in, talk about what's going on. A lot of things start to trigger for me. And it, and what what I'm coming up with right now is that two of the themes is that we're going to be watching is this, this geographical movement, housing boom out in the burbs and other places. And there's, there's going to be uh, a lot of movement in the country. And then the other thing is watching this capacity uh, it, we'll call it not capacity utilization from the standpoint of manufacturing, but the capacity of the of the economy coming back. So you know, uh, yeah, thank you uh, for that. Uh, Wood is the is the answer. Thank you. I knew it was out there. Um, so yeah, so one of the things to be looking at as we come into next week and beyond. So I'm just uh, I'm giving you folks homework, okay? Uh, and this is uh, how a community works, is I think 
that what we want to be looking at is exactly those are two of the themes that are going to play out this move into housing a lot of this stuff is played already but there's going to be other elements to look at on this geographical movement maybe in uh, real estate REITs. I'm, I'm going to start digging into this stuff. So take a look and see if anybody sees anything interesting. So make note of that. And when next week when we get to this live stream and maybe between there, I'll, I'll, it's kind of, I've made some notes to myself that this is an important thing to look at. And then trying to figure out if the capacity of the economy comes to the next level, what is it? What are the plays and what are the areas that capacity needs to expand or hasn't expanded yet? There may be some play, some little secret pockets out there. And I, I'm just putting that out to uh, to the uh, the community. And I, I you know, uh, it helps me a lot. I've, I, I, I am very focused on. Um, running multiple businesses and doing analysis and doing those types of things. So from the standpoint, this would be, this is a really good homework assignment for everybody. So, yeah, so I, I, I don't know, Zillow's public, right? So do we know the symbol on that? Yeah, I think uh, like Toll Brothers, there's, there's a lot of these housing plays are out there. So that one's going to take a little more. We kind of, it's kind of a known thing. So it's not like I, I've come, I've stumbled onto something new, but I think it's the beginning of this new cycle, not the end of it. So, I mean, we're, we're hardly getting the economy back going. And a lot of folks have changed their attitudes about where they're living. And I think that is one of the things that is going to drive continue to, to drive psychology of the markets and ultimately if we if we see some type of um, you know some sort of of um, uh, my, uh, further migration so it might actually the play might be more in regional real estate plays than anything in in the housing other than maybe there's still plays anyway we'll take a look at it I'm, I'm it's a theme that i've made note of and i think those are the two things that need to be figured out next is you know and all of this obviously could get derailed but you know the um the if madeira and all these folks are um are are going to come up with a vaccine and they're going to convince us to put this shit in our bodies then um and you get some uh, immunity and all this stuff against the uh, um, all this stuff. Maybe maybe the confidence comes back, but I, I think there's a play there, and I, I'm going to be looking at that. I think it'll be pretty good. Okay, uh, let's let's do this. Uh, Would It's an ETF, so this has not been as strong as lumber, that's for sure. Um, timber forestry. Uh, does anyone know that if you said, if, does anyone know what the uh, components and uh, maybe uh, Jason Kendall, maybe that's a good project if we can dig in and maybe go to First Bridge or something, see if we can find some of these components. And uh, one of the things that, um, that I've talked about on wave tech training and things of that sort uh, on, on that live stream that we do on Tuesdays is that, you know, one of the things that we're going to be giving you the ability to do is to build your own DTFs, your own mutual funds without internal cost. And uh, we're, we're really close to rolling that out. You can do a lot of this stuff with the wave tech tool for, you know, for 97 bucks a month, you definitely can, do that, but this next tool, the uh, portfolio expert, is is insanely powerful in in building a very dynamic index uh, and basket strategy. And um, I, I, I'm just curious. I want to ask a question out to you folks. Are any of you guys using Tasty Trade at all? With my buddy uh, uh, Snazov. 
I'm just curious about that. So um, I found out yesterday that they have a basket trading module. So I'm going to try to reach out to Tom, see if we can hook up and see if there's a possibility of taking our dynamic baskets and porting them into tasty trade model. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks like um, looks like we stabilized pretty much where I was talking here. We got a nice stabilization of the S and P. We're only six points off the highs now, so we printed what we print down to. We printed to sixty two, so we rallied ten handles. Um, yeah, there's. I don't think there's a risk of a major, major reversal today, not ahead of Paul talking tomorrow and not ahead, you know, of the, maybe there's something that Paul could say that would cause some kind of issue there. I doubt it. They're going to be everything, every statement these folks make are crafted. Okay. They're, they're crafted to have the ultimate power that they have. And probably to uh, probably yesterday, the central bankers have already decided what's the next move. And now they're crafting the statement for Friday. That's what they're going to spend the next two days on parsing words, getting the right words so they can make this statement to the world that, hey, we got your back. This is what we're doing. So sorry to segue there. But yeah, so still some stability there as far as as that goes. All right. Boy, how could we go a whole session like this and not test uh, hit on Tesla, right? Um, it's interesting because a weekly Tesla, I mean, these are just insane numbers, right? I, I love, I was on a thread the other day and somebody, I forget, somebody said that if you use Tesla math on Apple, then Apple, Apple should be worth 50 trillion, not 2 trillion. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, uh, yeah, so, you know, Tesla math is, is, is a, it's a new math. And, you know, but we saw that similar thing and I will touch on Amazon. I didn't hit that. We'll, we'll do that as well right now. And, um, but the, you know, the perception of the future is is um, is powerful, and and when you have new technologies that are, are really coming in, and, you know Tesla's got they got a lot of plays. They got a battery play, they got the car play, you know, and then of course you know Elon's just a rock star. There's no doubt about it. The guy's amazing. Uh, probably one. Of them, he's like maybe the Edison of our age from an innovative viewpoint. I think. And um, and maybe it's appropriate that he named his name uh, the company Tesla because uh, Tesla himself was an uh, amazing innovator. And um, if you read that story uh, and f follow that, there's a number of books out on that. The guy was um, way, way ahead of his time and they're still trying to do some of the things that he was talking about. But the point is that, yeah, this stock is uh, if we look at purely at the grid, I'll bring that up on the, on the screen here. We look at this where the high 2166, R2 2189. So we're approaching the R2 number for this week. And the EXT is 2329. So that's really crazy. So uh, at some stage, we've printed... The last three weeks we've seen the high, and if I bring up the uh, the WaveTech tool here, now let me go let me go to the daily real quick.
Yeah, there's uh, some crazy stuff. So we had this this buy that came on back in in April. We got out of this thing when it consolidated, but it broke out and got immediately back on the horse. It's up 25% on this last trade. So bought on 813 on the breakout. It was the day after the breakout. And it's it's writing this up. These are all vertical. You're looking at the PPMs here are just cranking. So, um, you know, there, there's no doubt that that was big. I think we saw the same thing on Apple on a surge. We actually, we got out of Apple, same kind of scenario. We saw a, we saw this consolidation with Apple just gapped on the, on this news, but we bought it the day after the breakout and now it's up 15%. But there's, uh, this this stock it's going to be interesting to see what happens after the uh, after the split for sure so don't forget folks if you're watching the channel you can get access to this product there's a lot of a lot of things out here that you can you can actually find and uh, there's a lot of output every day and we're we have a court we have a ongoing training course that we do every tuesday for a couple hours every tuesday plus there's training videos so it's pretty simple to to get on board and i you know uh, this is a couple things if you like the channel you like my work this is another way to support our channel it's a hundred bucks a month from that standpoint so it's not um not a lot of money, but it's enough to make you pay attention and and be able to uh, use the product. And this is how you get it. You go to the uh, kendallreport.com slash wavetech. There's a video. I explain everything that you're that you're going to get from uh, the standpoint of um, what the product does and all that. And it it really is uh, is very helpful. Plus, we this is where you can build your own ETFs and your mutual funds. We call them personal funds. This is something you can do as well. And you got views of PPM indicators. It's a, it's a, a legacy piece of software that we made available and we are working on some, some new stuff to, to come out. So anyway, um, just bring that up for those of you watching and just want to, want to consider getting engaged. It's $3 and 12 cents a day. Not, not even a trip to uh, to Starbucks. I used to be a daily Starbucks guy when I worked in the cities. I spent about five fifty a day for coffee and a and a scone, right? Uh, but the uh, uh, the other thing we haven't touched on, I'm going to do Amazon here, and then um, but yeah. So let me finish Tesla. Tesla, that's pretty much the range there. The PPMs, you know, they're they're crazy. Eight eight point one percent per day. This ten period moving average is way down at fifteen hundred. It's it's literally jumping at at uh, one hundred and thirty handles per week. So it's going to take just like with some of the other markets we looked at. It's going to take three to four weeks from now. Those support levels are going to be well up at seventeen eighteen hundred. And so that but the, these numbers are are super big as far as uh, volatility on, on a weekly volatility range. You can see here that the, the uh, market grid is just on the expectations up and down. You're looking at, you know, a 300, basically a $320 range on this stock, just expectation for high to low. And when we were in a trend like this, you had a, a the low is 1672. We never got close to the S1, and R1 is 1695. Uh, we've been above that. R2 1745. The highs. Uh, let me make sure I got the right bar here. Yeah, the high 2166. We went to uh, 20 R2 2189. I had it on the wrong bar. Apologize. But yeah, so this is um, yeah. There's no current Fibonacci projections. Everything is, is flying on its own. The only thing I would say, and this is happening at a lot of these stocks, which I would I will bring in some caution to 
certainly wouldn't be buying Tesla if I had it. Uh, I would, and I had access to the WaveTech tool. I would use the the daily one two exit when that comes as a place to take some protection, protection, maybe buy some puts, put some kind of straddles on these things, something that would would go. But this is what I want to talk about, and this pattern exists in all of these these tech stocks. But this is probably um, most likely uh, this is the fifth wave pattern of the if we if I took the time to do what I did on the S&P at the beginning of this broadcast then there's still more to go on this thing from that standpoint but this is definitely a five wave pattern and we're likely to see um, this continue but it is likely a the end of the pattern as well or end of the sequence and then there will be a, at some stage a giant consolidation backfilling all that stuff so at some stage if you stay in too long they're going to take your money or they're going to take some of it back anyway. Okay, uh, I said Amazon, right? What time is it? 12.30 Pacific time, so we're about a half hour to close. Here's Amazon printing uh, RTX 34.36, high 34.51. We're printed on a weekly basis through the RXT or the extreme number. PPMs, very positive. This 10 week moving average 30 3095 moving about 60 handles per week so 31 3140 is will be the major support next week and it looks like to me that we're we're stalling on the short term PPM1 or the PPM uh, PPM1 is stalling. PPM2 and 3 are still expanding. But what we could set up here is a trading range up here. But once again, there's an argument for what I just showed you in Tesla. And we could bring up all of these stocks and we'd find the same situation, which is this. Since we hit this low, we're, we're we're probably looking at this is wave four. So we're at the beginnings of wave five. And if wave five and one are equal, if you go from the low to this high, I'm not going to do the calculation right now, then from this low, you would add that length on. And chances are that's going to be your top. So there's a way to go on this, on this symbol. And even though we could go through a couple weeks, scenario if we close above the RXT number which is 36 34 36 so if we were trading right at it right now 34 35 if we got above that number then we we, we could see uh, two to three weeks of sideways and, and that would make sense but like I said I think all bets are off and making any big ideas about tops and markets and completions until we see what comes out over the next couple of days because I believe this is a potentially epic moment in history is this is the not the first time these bankers have talked going back to the the whole Jackson Hole virtual symposium we'll call it their annual symposium but this is the first time they're making a joint statement they've all talked they talk every day but they, this is the first time they're trying to put a program together and, and try to do, do stuff. So that, that is definitely um, something that's going on. Okay. Yeah, so I see somebody made a comment. Bezos hit $200 billion today. It's crazy.
Yeah, so exact sciences, I just got a request for that. Okay, so, um, yeah, I don't know what to say much about this, but we are seeing a rollover. We got a negative PPM1 on a weekly 1.5. We do have a positive PPM2, 1.8. And so probably this is the bottom in the grid here. We're trading the low 75, 67, 74, 76, 29, 74, 24 is probably the low end of this. There might be a play back into the upper end of the grid, but there's no trending plays here at the moment. This is going to need to uh, stabilize here, and it could go as far back as the 200-week moving average, which is at 65. Uh, 65.34. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, these these big stocks, I put an Exxon up, and these energy stocks almost look like Boeing. I mean, the, the, but this this might be one of the other areas to watch from that demand situation. But a long time ago, I saw a report where when crude oil prices are doing really good, these companies, you would think they would appreciate better and they really don't. But you look at this this stock. We've been in in a you know we topped out on this trend here way back in April of 19, and we just continued to go down. So um, I'm not I'm not sure. I don't know enough about the company fundamentally to comment on it. But we're definitely we definitely have some negative trend going here where the PPM one is at. 1.34 and also it's uh, that's a negative and the ppm3 is minus 1.41 so this thing's definitely in a consol lower end consolidation looks like it wants to move just a, a little bit lower so i don't see any opportunity here yet but this might be one of those places uh, to go for I'm bringing up the VIX here real quick. This is a cash VIX. Ugh, hang on one second. I've just got to pull a couple of studies off here, just messing this up. Yeah, we just had a cycle a couple of days ago. I don't know, maybe uh, this VIX is hovering around this lower end of the range. What is this, around 21? It doesn't want to go below that. And it looks like it's just in a trading range. I don't think there's any indication of anything as of yet. Yeah, Jason Kendall, I see your comment on the uh, wood portfolio. We we need to see if we can move some of those. That's what I want to talk to you about. Just so remind me uh, that I want to move some of that over on the WaveTech tool as well. Okay. Um, Thirty-five minutes to go. Looks like they want to try to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring up the. Uh, 
the S&P back for a minute. We're up 29 handles, 73, 78 high on the futures. So we're trying to push back up toward the high. And so what this means, if we can maintain up here, we're going to see a potential close above the RXT number, which would tell us the possibilities for a, a sideways to down number for the next couple of days. But like I said, I don't know that it's going to be a really tough next couple of days from an analyst viewpoint from the um, it's going to be tough from an analyst viewpoint from the standpoint of calling these markets and what type of volatility we're going to get whenever you have these big announcements and things. I, I'm not sure what time uh, Paul is talking tomorrow. I'll look that up before the, the video, but I, I think that there's definitely some things that are, are going to be going on. Uh, with the market volatility over the next couple of days. So we, we could see some excitement, negative, positive range expansion, a couple of things like that as we come into that range. Um, let me just look here. Okay. Just taking a look here. Oh, some of the things going on, timeline. Yeah, who knows, maybe they're going to punch out new highs, some short covering coming into the futures close. All right, let's let's take a look at a couple more How about a couple more stocks, folks? Throw some stocks at me here. Just fill a little time. And about 10, 10 minutes, we'll watch the close together and just see how this thing's going to close up. It's the, the two times of the day that I love to watch are the opening action and the closing action. It tells us a lot about, about stuff out there. Yeah, let's take a look at, um, at shop. Yeah, I'm going to put the grid back up just so we can get a feel for. Yeah, so we're breaking out of the extreme for today. The the grid for shop was 1068 high 15. So we've blown through that. Matter of fact, it's interesting, basically. R1 was 1047, 1046, so basically an unchanged open, and this thing just exploded out of the gate. Yeah, we, we closed yesterday 1037, so basically gap, we didn't basically, we gapped up and just exploded. And, you know, so this, this thing is just going crazy this is the daily let me flip over to a weekly and just see if what we what we're getting here yeah so weekly is trading up the rxt 1097 we're above that 1115 high uh last is 1089 so we're back um, back below it just by a little bit but this is definitely printing up at that higher in the range and one of the things i want to point out here is that the 10 period moving average was at a thousand. Uh, if we look at the low 988, we traded just below the 10 period moving average. And those of you that have the wave tech tool or you watching chart, when you see a two uh, over on the left here, or let's look at, at the indicator itself on the right hand side, I've got my cursor here is 
you'll see that PPM1 is at 2.12. And when you have a 2.12 and you trade on a weekly, this is the same thing that uh, had everything to do with the gold trade, is when you see that type of upward angle of attack, the probabilities for the market to decline below that level is basically nil at the at a 2.2 there's less than a 10 percent probability so nine times out of ten it's going to bounce at that number and that's exactly what happened here so if you um one of the uh, one of the things i'm still trying to 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 get under control is and i'm and i'm close finally is getting the ppms the market grid and those things onto the app store at TradeStation. I believe that's going to be next week, actually. So I'm, I'm pretty close to having that done. But the uh, um, but this type of action, when you see a PPM at that level at a 2.12% and you see it touch that 10 period moving average, that's your trade. So you could have bought anything under a thousand that PPM, uh, the PPM one tracks the 10 period moving average, no matter what chart, we could be on a one minute chart, same thing, same kind of characteristics, but the PPM one tracks the 10 period moving average, two tracks the 21 and three tracks the 40 and I use simple 10, 21, 40 period moving averages. And the reason I use simple and not exponential or any kind of weighted averages is they help to define the WaveTech patterns. And, and also WaveTech is actually a combination of using moving averages and Elliott Wave to identify sequences. So the goal of using those moving averages like they are was just that and then understanding the characteristics or the ppms and the angle of attack and the rate of change of those moving averages tell about probabilities of whether those are valid trend lines or not those of you who watch the channel and know me know i hate trend lines i'm not a trend line i don't like lines i draw i'm glad to use moving averages and understand uh, one of the hard things to do with trend lines is they're static and not only that they're subjective to where you, what points you draw on the chart moving averages are are part of the math of the markets and i can also look at the problem we did a big study way back in 1984 83 and 84 on what the angle of attack or what percentage change was it when the pro and what the probabilities were for a market to hold the trend line. So everybody looks at moving averages, but no one looks at the probabilities of them holding and go, oh, the 200 day, the 50 day, you know, most people use 50, 100, 200. I hate those numbers. They're just totally, I, I like the 200. The 200 has, has a lot of validity, but I use the 10, 21, 40 to identify these patterns. And um, this is absolutely the, uh, uh, the market. All this stuff that I'm showing you is all over, you know, a, an entire career of development and understanding. And it's, it's awesome I get to share this with you. Yeah, I think uh, I just saw a comment in line. This is one of the biggest bubbles. I talked about um, this uh, a little bit ago. And I talked about this a bit ago. And I just come on screen. But this market is like that airplane that's going straight up. And it finally hits the gravitational pull. It finally gets to a point and it just falls straight down. And but I don't think we're at the top of this this curve yet. And certainly if you if you looked at a bunch of these charts, uh, NASDAQ is the easy one, right? 
is that you're probably looking at one of these scenarios where it's definitely a parabolic curve. You could take the the tulip bubble chart and you can do all that stuff and all that stuff matches out. But the hard part is, is to try to find when these things end and it's impossible to figure out where the where the top is. So at some stage, you just have to start uh, uh, have to start doing this. I wonder if um, I don't know that I have them. I'm not sure what the symbol is. Unfortunately, let me look at one more page here. I usually don't use. The chart. Uh, oh, wait, this is it. Hang on. No, no data for this symbol. Let me try one thing here. If it doesn't work, we'll move on. I'll just talk about it. Actually, it worked. Okay. Um, bear with me. It'll take me just a second to set this up. I've been wanting to do this. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to let me get back. So I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you a story right before we get into the close. Yeah, what I was hoping to do, so it won't let me get there. So, um, We're going to go over, I'll just let you get you folks watch the S&P uh, trade into the close. Why? So one of the one of the things that I'm going to see if I can find this on uh, on another service, but there was a trade back around 1980, I believe it was, where the sugar market went. I don't remember the prices, but I think it went from like three cents a pound to like 80 cents a pound in a very short period. So it was that total parab parabolic curve. And um, I was working in office with a bunch of other reps at the time. And there was a, a guy, <laughs> so a quick story. There was a guy that had, um, he had married really well. It was in Northern California at the time. And there was a, a ice cream chain and his wife had done, had all the money and he had taken thirty thousand dollars, and he he knew that sugar prices are starting to go up because they were buying yeah. sugar all the time. So he bought sugar, and he bought it with another rep in in the office, and sugar just went. I mean, it was insane. His thirty thousand turned into like three point three million or something. It was nuts, and and. <laughs> So is that whole parabolic curve, and that's why I want to find this chart. I'm gonna I'm gonna dig through and find it. But it went up and it just literally collapsed and went from three cents to like I forget the number. I want it, it was a big number, but it dropped all the way back almost to where it started. And the guy's comment was, he goes, I don't. He was an older guy, and he goes, I don't know what these young kids get on drugs, but nothing was as good as that. He goes, I don't even care that it fell. He goes, it felt so good when it was going up. But that's basically that whole scenario of when when prices are going, that's what I, the celebrate, right? If you're celebrating, you should be selling something. So that's celebrating with the S-E-L-L. -L. And so make sure that you're, uh, if you're starting to feel that euphoric move, it's okay to get out early. I think JP Morgan was famous for saying, that uh, his biggest problem he had was he always get out early. And so uh, you can 
you can make a lot of money getting out early. You don't have to catch the top. And of course you get the FOMO and all that stuff when things start to go up. But you do need to make some decisions or the beauty of the world we live in today is we can actually go through and actually buy, uh, put, you know, put some option strategies or buy puts against positions so that you know where the floor is. And that, that's an also an important thing to know. So, um, okay. So it looks like uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the watch the last eight minutes of trade and just talk a little bit about the markets. And um, watch this thing into the close. We're trading 74, high 78. Don't expect we'll see a, a lot of movement here. Uh, one of the things that I like to watch is the the move, the move in the volume that comes in, and I've got a level two screen up here for you. So on the left hand side, you can see the bid ask sizes. We're running about 150 by 150 right now. As we get into the final minute, you're going to see these numbers expand a lot. Sometimes they used to get into a thousand by 1500, like huge numbers. We, uh, I can tell you that. One of the things that's happened since we go, if we look in the rearview mirror back at, at March and April, and is liquidity in the market has come back. And we've got a lot of stability. And that's why we're seeing these 12 and 18 handle ranges, and we're not seeing the 125 ranges. So, um, you know, 125 handle ranges like we're seeing because there was no liquidity it was running on air pockets and prices could move substantially. So we at least have some pretty major. Uh, we, you know, we have we have some major liquidity that's come back in, which is also given us stability and, you know, markets aren't nearly as fun as they were I was talking to an old buddy yesterday and he goes you know volatility is your friend and you know we've we've seen a lot of overall if we go back in those times you you really are looking at a, a consolidation from uh in from that standpoint and the stability come in so markets aren't as exciting at these type of levels but yeah i don't expect to see much here uh gonna flash over just for a second over to the We'll take a look at, this is going to be weekly, so let's go daily on on the E-minis, looking at, at the grid here. I'll bring that up on a screen. So 60, 66, it, or I'm sorry, 77 was the top end of the grid for today. And we're printing a uh, high with 78, and we're 73, so it looks like there's a good chance from a future standpoint, we're not going to see that get up there. If we go and take a look at the at the cash market, we are above the, the grid on the cash. Now the top end crash uh, cash RXT was 34.62. We're at 34.78 right now. The high's been 81, so we're just printing going right out the high. So this could be this could be the um, the trigger for a little sideways. But like I said, I think all bets are off until we get through this announcement by Powell and all of these things that are, that are going on from that standpoint. All right, we'll go back to the level two screen here. 
yeah, like I said, not not much going on here. We got about five minutes to go. Um, Yeah, we went through quite a bit on gold. Uh, that when this rebroadcast comes up, that'll be that'll be good. Um, yeah, I think I'm still trying to get a mystery guest on, and and try to and try to uh, cover these miners. That, that would be, I still think that'd be a fun show, especially uh, in lieu of my analysis that I did on the metals. I think uh, Jay pointed out that at 105 uh, on the broadcast, I went through the a lot of details in gold and projections and also covered silver at that time. Uh, thank you, uh, Dustin. Yeah, Paul, uh, 8 a.m., so that must be 9 Eastern, so that's 6 a.m. And depending on when I get tonight's video done, look at this. Here we are printing the highs. We just we're, we're right at the highs on the S&P. So there's short covering ahead of this uh, early morning meeting. That's that talk is going to be before the opening. Isn't that interesting? So yeah, we're 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 printing them up. So this will this will be a, this an interesting close we're coming into, I think. Uh yeah. You are right, Christoph. I really need to make an effort to do that. It would actually be worth doing a special show just on the miners, do do a a live stream, or maybe I maybe I just need to get on with them and record it and edit it up so we could get get the uh, get the points out quicker. But I think a live stream would be really interesting. Uh, no, I, I have not, Christoph. Yeah, I mean, I know those numbers, sure. Uh, that's why we have 21, actually. Oh, I see what you're saying, yes. Uh, yeah, we did look at that, actually. And we came up with 10, 21, 40 as the best averages. We looked at all of those. And if you notice, 10, 21, 40, 21 was the only Fibonacci sequence that we decided to use on the moving averages. And it actually, the 21 is the the primary moving average in all the sequences. So we didn't make a new high. We printed up to 77.50. A little selling here in the final moment, just squaring up. Now this is where uh, watching a close, especially if you have the level two, how the futures square up after this move. So a little bit of selling, got a little surge coming into the close, almost printed a new high, backed off four or five handles off of this thing. So you're getting a little selling. The uh, If you notice the last minute, we're getting about 200, 400 on a side on the far left here where the uh, level two is. Not nearly what we used to get, but this these are good numbers. Uh, this, this is a good positive number. So here comes a little bids in in the final seconds. I missed the closing bells from the floor days. There we go. So that was the close. Um, you know, uh, now this action right here is really important. This will tell you a little bit about net net traders uh, from the standpoint. Of see if we get some liquidation here or if it just stays stable, see if there's any imbalances as we came into the close from the standpoint of whether more buyers and sellers. And so far, there's no big move. It usually will happen within that first minute or two. So it looks like it's pretty stable. Nobody, everybody, that little squaring up in that range, the final range was about a uh, last three minutes was about a 400 point range. So nothing really there as far as that goes. Uh, from that standpoint. Um, 
but yeah, so the, uh, uh, yeah, we're seeing a little bit of selling, but we're down at that end, that bottom in the range, 74. I think 77.50 was the high print. Let's take a look at that. Yep, 77, 77.50 was the high print. That was 50 cents off the high of the day. We just printed 73s. So we're seeing a, a little bit of selling. You see the, the market grid expanding here. And you know, so there's not, not a lot there from that standpoint. All right. Um, yeah, it's interesting, uh, Samuel, talking about these dark pool volume. Uh, never looked into that. That's something uh, maybe is worth looking into. I actually have a, um, an acquaintance that are pretty active in that area. Not, not super familiar with it, though. Yeah, Tobias. Yeah, uh, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, so we're, we'll wind down this presentation for today. So we're looking at um, um, what do we got on here? Two hours and 37 minutes is typically what we do. So um, really appreciate everybody showing up and, you know, just being able to um, you know, uh, share the time with you folks, you know, you want to support the channel and this is a way to do it. Sign up, you know, um, hundred bucks a month. We do a lot of training. You get a lot of, uh, a lot of things that we are, uh, that comes out of software and things you get going as far as we get. Um, like I said, uh, hopefully this coming week will be the app store week for trade station. I will let you know as soon as I have that project, kicked off and, and ready to go. So, um, yeah, um, I don't know how many, yeah, I think Jay's right. If, if you enjoyed the show today, uh, go ahead and smash the good old like button and, and kind of go from there. But, um, yeah, we, we, uh, we appreciate everybody in the community, uh, that has been really a lot of familiar names that are on here all the time. And I really appreciate really appreciate it a lot. And, uh, you know, it, it's been, like I said, it's been a lot of fun. I got to do some serious analysis with you folks today. Yeah, you have no idea all the notes that I've taken. I've got two pages of notes from what I've talked about today so that I will remember as we go forward some of the things we talked about. And I think we developed a number of things uh, today out of today's analysis. So, Good stuff, folks. Really appreciate it. Um, like I said, it's it's a work session for me, uh, trying to trying to dig really into deep into stuff because it's hard for me to find two and a half hours, but this gives me the opportunity to do that. So really appreciate it. So once again, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it as always. You know, sign up for our products, support our channel, and uh, we can we 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 got through a milestone this week. We're above 20,000 subscribers and we've never advertised or done anything. It's uh, you folks found me and we're, we're glad to be uh, continuing to do stuff. All right, folks, have a great afternoon, rest of the day. We'll see you on tonight's video and we'll get uh, two more days before the big announcement from the central bankers. So have a great day. Thanks a lot, folks.